So, we were up at Fort George yesterday, uh, trying some new beers, talking to some old friends, and uh, was talking to one of the servers up there. It's a great example of just how interesting, philosophically, the world around us can be. We were talking about a whole host of different things. We were talking about, we were talking about knitting. We were talking about punk rock. We were talking about the conversations between the two. We talked about a lot of stuff. One of the things that came up in the process of our conversation was scent, the role of scent. And a friend brought up the idea that, that one of the ways that she travels is through scent, through the smell of things. I said, well, that sounds kind of weird. How does that work? What do you mean? She said, well, I can't afford to go very many places. It's not an easy thing for me to do. So what I try to do instead is I just let the scent of something, the scent of lavender, the scent of cake, uh, the scent of soap, take me to some place in my imagination. It's how I go different places. You know, that was a beautiful idea. It's wonderful. It's quite poetic. But it also got me thinking about why is it that this even works? How is it that something like that can work? Uh, and I asked her that. I said, how is it do you think that it can work? Well, let me tell you something that we discovered with this and talking it through. One thing that, that occurred to us as we were talking is how much scent is perhaps unique among the other senses in that it's the most amorphous of all the senses. Here's what I mean. If you think about uh, sight or touch, these are senses which, as vivid as they are, are very distinct. They're very much attached to a particular thing. When I see something, I see that thing. When I touch something, I touch that thing. Um, taste, I suppose, as well. Now, sound, not quite as much. Sound can, uh, is, is a little more dispersed than the other senses as far as what we're hearing. Sound, of course, can echo, so it can be distributed in broad latent space. But I'm not sure there's any sense that we have, save perhaps imagination itself, that is so amorphous. I mean, think about the way it is when you, when you smell something. When you smell something, you smell it everywhere. Some places it's more concentrated, some places it's less concentrated, but the presence of it fills a space. And the fact that scent does that, that it, that it uh, is atmospheric, uh, it's necessarily atmospheric, is perhaps part of the way and reason it's so powerful for the imagination. It's like literature, we were saying. It's something that makes you have to begin to, to come at it with your imagination, to begin to associate it, to make connections with it, to make analogies with it. So in the same way that really, really well-written literature can help you go to a new place because through its power of suggestion, maybe there's no scent that's, or no sense that's quite as powerful for suggestion as scent. And there was one more thing, too, about, about scent that came up to us uh, in this conversation. In the same way that all the other senses are much more direct and immediate than, than scent is, it's also the case that scent is the one sense we have that isn't in the present in the way the other senses are. Think about it. You think about sight, you think about sound, you think about touch. All these senses have to do with something that is right here, right now. It's in the present, temporally speaking, right? But that isn't necessarily true with scent. As a matter of fact, usually with the smell, it's quite often not that at all. It's something that lingers. It's something that exists in a memory and that when we participate in it and remember things about it, we remember it in terms of a memory. So, just a couple insights that came from a simple conversation about the nature of, well, just out of, out of anything at all, but comes towards the idea of scent. Uh, the way in which scent is perhaps the unique among the senses the most amorphous, the most suggestive to imagination, the most powerful and distributed, dispersed temporally, and something as a result of that, I suppose, that we can use to imagine all sorts of things when we have these conversations.